What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to talk a little bit about rendering um, wave files and just doing a quick um, quick master um, on your wave file and getting it ready for CD or MP3. Um, <clears throat> first I want to talk about some, some rendering uh, quality. In uh, FL Studio, if you go to uh, Options, Audio Settings, um, you'll see that uh, you can obviously select your output, which is your card or your driver that you want to use, uh, your clock source, your ASIO timing, and all this other stuff. Uh, but what's important, uh, one of the important things here is uh, the interpolation, uh, and that's for the mixer. And what basically that does is that says, I'm going to use a certain amount of quality um, when I'm rendering the track. And uh, you can... You can set this uh, low uh, linear, which is the lowest quality. Uh, you could set it to six point uh, hermite, which is a pretty good quality, or you can set it to one of these sync depth ones. Uh, now, the higher the quality here, uh, it's going to warn you it's slow as hell. But the higher the quality, the harder the computer has to work to reach that quality, and that's why you're going to get a lot more CPU usage and possibly um, some stuttering or something like that. But if you experiment, um, you can go to the, you know, probably, I, I can use SyncDep64 on this particular computer, but 6-point Hermite is, is very good as well uh, for just regular playback. Um, and the next thing, uh, that's just during when you, when you hit play in FL Studio, that's what interpolation you're going to listen to. That's how it's going to render the sound for immediate real-time playback. Okay, so you can have it set to something low, like a linear or a six-point hermite. But when you're ready to actually take your track and burn it down, what you want to do is go to File Export Wave File. The reason why you want to do Wave File is you're going to get a better quality um, Wave File. And also, if you're going to do any any post uh, mastering to your to your file, uh, it's always better to do it to a 32-bit or 24-bit file because um, the uh, the audio is going to be cleaner, the effects are going to be cleaner, and you're not going to have uh, a, a lot of clipping problems if you decide to um, you know to try to you know, maximize your volume through various means. So um, we'll select wave file and then we'll give it a, a name, and in this case it's uh, using my file name. Uh, with a wave at the end of it, so I'll hit save. And then I'm going to have these options. Now here are the important options for rendering. Uh, basically, want to make sure I'm going to render it to a wave. Um, my wave depth uh, is going to be 32-bit, 0.24, which actually that's what will render it into a 24-bit file. Um, it'll compute everything at 32 bits, but it'll render it down uh, to 24-bit file. And then um, my sync depth uh, for the rendering quality is also at 64. Now, remember the sync depths are, are a lot slower than the first two options, but the quality is also better. Now, when I've done some some of my own tests, and in my own tests, I did not see uh, uh, a great enough difference between 64, 128, and 256 for me to use 128 or 256. Uh, sync depth 64 seemed pretty pretty darn good, so I just that's what I use. But if uh, you know if you want to go higher, that's that's obviously your prerogative. But it will take a long time to uh, to render. Um, then on the uh, on the other options here, um, I have these three options highlighted because uh, the alias free TS404. Even though I don't use 404 the TS-404 very often, um, I just leave it on because if I ever did use it, I'd want it on. High Q, uh, HQ means high quality for all plugins. Uh, that'll basically tell your plugin if it supports, uh, if it, supports it, um, it'll tell your plugins, hey, render in uh, high quality uh, and give me some high quality output. And then disable max poly, and that's basically just... Uh, you know, going to allow as many notes as need to be playing, play all at the same time. Um, these options here, you can split mixer tracks, and if you have that selected, what will happen is 
each one of my mixer tracks back here in the mixer will get split into its very own WAV file. And that's useful if you're going to give your, uh, your track to uh, someone to remix in like uh, Pro Tools or something like that. You can tell it to split the mixer tracks. It, it'll basically create a kick track, a snare track, a hat track. Whatever you have in your mixer uh, will all get sent to their individual uh, WAV file. Um, wave files, but I don't want to do that. Uh, save acidize, that's for uh, putting markers and loop points and things like that within your uh, wave file for acid to use. I don't use acid uh, very often, um, and uh, so I don't I don't need that. And save slice markers again. That's just putting some data in the wave file to tell it where the slice markers are. But since I'm rendering uh, a finished product I don't want that either the the these two options are more useful if you're just rendering a loop and you want to uh, you know you want to have loop points or slice markers in it so it knows how to uh, how to play it back at various tempos and stuff like that um, okay and then the final thing is my looping mode I always leave the remainder because uh, if you have some trailing note that uh, needs to you know fade or decay naturally uh, if you had this set to cut it would it would just cut the note off and it wouldn't sound good and if you have it set to wrap it'll play that sound at the beginning of your file which is not what you want so I have leave remainder and then uh, and then I would hit start now in this case I'm not going to hit start because I've already rendered the file but um, but it'll start and then it this progress bar will basically go and then when it reaches hundred percent this dialogue will close and you'll be uh, you'll be ready to go. Okay, so now uh, what I'm going to do is load up the pre-rendered file. Okay, what I've done is I've opened up a file uh, that I've rendered out of uh, FL Studio. It's not the file that that I showed you before, but it's it's another file that I just had already already to go. Um, and basically, um, here you can see. Uh, down here that it's a 32-bit file right down here at the bottom see it says 32-bit and it's obviously a stereo when uh, the top half of this is uh, is I guess the left and this is the bottom half is the right and uh, what I'm going to do is just expand the window a bit so we can see the waveform better and you can see uh, a couple of things that I want you to notice here is that the waveform itself, the peak is about right here, and both of them, they're going to be about the same if you've, if you've mixed it uh, pretty balanced. Um, so basically what we're looking at is, you know, some peaks down here. Now all this empty space between where the peaks are of this blue waveform data and this line right here where my, where my cursor is just barely touching the top of, the top of my cursor is touching that line. That space right there, and as well as below it, and then the space here and the space here, uh, that's all just empty space that we need to, uh, we could basically fill that up uh, by, by making our, our sound louder, and then it'll make our overall song louder. And, but we don't want to cross that line. We don't want to cross the, the, the zero point, which is, uh, which is that line. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll basically uh, highlight a section of the song. Uh, for example, I might look for a, a dense part of the song, and by dense I mean it doesn't, it has the least amount of space. Like this right there, obviously that's kind of like a gap, so I don't want that part. But over here, I can kind of see maybe right here, you know, that's about average for my song, and that's probably like the densest part of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that, just that piece, and then I'm going to go to Analyze and Statistics. And it's going to run a statistical uh, analysis on that section. And um, the important thing I'm looking for here is my peak amplitude. And that's basically telling me the, the loudest that my sound is going in that particular section that I highlighted is negative 7.61 decibels. Okay, so what I want to do is... The reason why I do this is because it gives me the exact number I need to make it so that it's when I when I amplify it, 
it won't go over zero. So I know I can amplify it by 7.61 by plus 7.61, and that will get me close to zero dB, which is where you want to be. Um, I, I usually go a little bit less, so I'll probably go like 7.5. You know, so that'll leave a little bit of, of, of headroom at the the top of the file. So, so anyway, so now that I know what number I need to deal with, so 7.61 is my number. Um, what I'll do is I'll select the whole WAV file, uh, and then I'll go to Effects, Amplitude, and I'll use Hard Limiting. And what Hard Limiting will do is it'll basically just raise everything by the uh, the number I the number I put, uh, which will be here. Boost input by, um, and then I'm going to say 7.5, so I get very close to zero. And I usually leave the look ahead time and release time where they are. You want to link left and right, um, obviously, because you want both your channels. And then this up here just says, uh, make sure the the amplitude never goes above negative 0.1, uh, which just helps to ensure that it stays just under zero. Okay, so now I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to let it do its thing. It's going to take a little while. Okay, so now that it's done, you can see now all the peaks are, are, are right up there. And actually, some of them are a little bit over that line, because that line is not exactly zero. It's actually just under zero. I think it's actually at, at about one. So uh, so uh, we can see that, uh, you know, my waveform is is pretty much maximized now. And if I zoom in here, uh, and just to take a closer look, uh, we can see that it, it pretty much fills all the space. So we're, we're looking good. Um, now, the sound uh, obviously is going to be maximized at this point. Uh, but what else I would do while I was in here is I would look at the beginning of the file and see if there was any space. There isn't, uh, so I don't need to worry about that. But the other thing I would do is go to the end of the file, and in this particular song, I want to fade it out. So what I'll do is I'll just select from the end uh, a certain number of seconds. And uh, let me squeeze the window down. Uh, right here where my mouse is, this says length 14. That means I've selected 14 seconds, which is a little bit more than I want. I found that a good number is about 12 or 13 for a fade out. But uh, obviously anyone can set it to whatever they like. So I'm going to set it to about 12 seconds. That's 12.29 seconds. And then I'm going to go to Effects, Amplitude, Envelope. And the reason why you want to select Envelope is because you can select this Bell Curve Envelope, which is one of the built-in ones. And this one has a nice uh, curve. And what that will do is it will start to slowly fade it out. Then it will kind of, kind of just quickly fade it out and then slow down right at, as it's you know the the volume's lower it'll it'll slow down again so this this volume this is basically going to be what the volume's going to be for the selected part okay so i'm going to say okay to that it's going to do my envelope and now when i go look look at my envelope you can see i'm going to zoom in on that part uh and you can see that uh that it's faded out and if we listen to it you'll hear that it's got a nice fade out it's not too fast and it's not too strong. Uh, it's not too fast and it's not too slow. Okay, so it's pretty good. Uh, another thing uh, we, I can show you real quick is that if we go to one of the loud parts of the song, like let's say uh, this part, for example, I'm going to play it. Uh, but what I want you to do is when I'm playing it, I want you to notice down here the the meter, the peak meter, will never get to zero. And that's a good thing. And especially these two little rectangles here will never light up. Uh, if they light up, it means we're clipping, and that's a bad thing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Okay, so you can see that I've got it as loud as I possibly can without clipping. 
And that's, that's what you're going for. Okay, so now what I would normally do is I would then select Edit. And you can't see it, so let me, I would go Edit, uh, Convert Sample Type. And then I would convert the sample rate to 44.1, and I would set the resolution here to 16-bit. And what that's going to do for me is that's going to basically make this WAV file so that it's ready for a CD. And I always like to keep a WAV file ready to be burned to CD because it's much better if you burn a WAV file to a CD than an MP3 file. Because an MP3 file, you're, you're always going to lose some of the fidelity of the file. So... Uh, so you know, so we go 16-bit resolution, 44.1, and uh, and then we'll hit OK. Now I'm not going to do it because it takes a uh, you know a couple minutes to to do it on this computer, but uh, but um, you know you can you can do it. Now I've got a preset called CD Ready, which actually has those options in it that I can go to uh, whenever I want. Okay, but let's assume that I've done that, and now it's in. It's in uh, 16-bit 44.1. It's going to look the same on the screen. It's not going to, and it's going to sound pretty much the same as well. Uh, but then the other thing I'll do is immediately I'll go to File, Save Copy As, and then when it asks me what I want to save the copy as, you can see it's defaulting now to MP3 because I do that so often. It remembered, it remembered uh, what I wanted to do, and uh, and then I set that to MP3. Uh, now on the options for the MP3, uh, in this case I'm 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 doing the MP3 for uh, for like SoundClick, and SoundClick has their own uh, player that if you don't encode it right, it's going to play back really slow. Uh, so for that, uh, I don't have my uh, preset here set for that. But for that, what you what you basically want to do is go go to 128. Uh, KBPS 441 uh, 44,100 uh, hertz stereo. Uh, you want a constant bit rate, and you want just regular MP3. If you and obviously this is all uh, settings that may be slightly different in your own um, wave editing software. The codec you want uh, is not current best quality. You would think that's that's what you would want, but it won't play right at, at SoundClick. So uh, you can go with like legacy high quality, and that ought to be good enough. Uh, everything else you could set or leave uh, however you want. Uh, you know, if you want to set the private bits and copyrights and all that, um, and then you hit OK, and that'll save a copy of it in MP3. And uh, and then there you, when you're done, you should end up with uh, a WAV file that's CD ready. And, and the loudness has been maximized, and you should end up with an MP3 that you can upload to places and uh, and share with your friends and and do whatever you want with that. Um, and that's my quick mastering technique. It took me probably longer to explain everything than it does to actually do it because when I'm when I'm ready to do it, all this is just like automatic for me. I don't even have to think about it, uh, and and it's 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 so much of a habit. Uh, so anyway, so I hope you guys learned something and, uh, you know, uh, send people to the board, uh, post messages, questions, etc. on uh, on the forum, www.warbeats.com, uh, free tutorials, uh, free online help. I'll even review your, review your tracks uh, if you post them up. And uh, so far, it's been a really great uh, atmosphere on the board. I mean, there's a virtually no uh, no haters on the board which is cool and uh, I just want to say thanks to all you guys who are uh, helping out and that does it for this tutorial and uh, I'll see you guys down the road <laughs>